Appendix 1, Final Agreement for the Settlement of the Differences, as described in the United Nations Security Council Resolutions 817 from 1993 and 845 from 1993 also, the termination of the Interim Accord of 1995 and the establishment of a strategic partnership between the parties. Preamble. The first party, the Hellenic Republic, the first party, and the second party, which was admitted to the United Nations in accordance with the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 47-225 of the 8th of April 1993, the second party jointly referred to as the parties. Recalling the principles and purposes of the Charter of the United Nations, the Helsinki Final Act of 1975, the relevant acts of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, or OS, OSCE, and the values and principles of the Council of Europe. Guided by the spirit and principles of democracy, respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms and dignity. Abiding by the provisions of the Charter of the UN, and in particular those referring to the obligation of the states to refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. Emphasizing their full commitment to the principles of the inviolability of frontiers and the territorial integrity of states incorporated in the Helsinki Final Act of 1975, reaffirming the existing frontier between them as an enduring international border. In full accord on the need to strengthen peace, stability, security, and further promote cooperation in Southeastern Europe. Desiring to strengthen an atmosphere of trust and good neighborly relations in the region and to put to rest permanently any hostile attitudes that may persist and agreeing on the need to refrain, refrain from irredentism and revisionism in any form. Recalling their obligation in accordance with the Charter of the United Nations and international law not to interfere on any pretext or in any form in the internal affairs and jurisdiction of the other. Underscoring also the importance of the development of friendly relations among states and of resolving disputes by peaceful means in accordance with the Charter of the UN. Resolving the differences pursuant to Security Council Resolutions 817, 1993 of the 7th of April, 1993, and 845 of 1993 of the 18th of June, 1993, as well as Article 5 of the Interim Accord of the 13th of September, 1995, in a dignified and sustainable manner, having in mind the importance of the issue and the sensitivities of each party. Taking into account the General Assembly Resolution 47-225 of the 8th of April, 1993. Taking into consideration the Interim Accord, the memorandum of the 13th of October 1995 on practical measures relating to the interim accord, the memorandum on the mutual establishment of liaison offices in Skopje and Athens on the 20th of October 1995, as well as the process of confidence building measures, or in short, CBMs. Underlying their strong will for mutual friendship, good neighborliness and cooperative partnership committing to strengthen, widen, and deepen their bilateral relations and to lay firm foundations for the entrenchment and respect of good neighborly relations and for the development of their comprehensive bilateral cooperation.
and seeking to reinforce and broaden their bilateral cooperation and to upgrade it to the level of a strategic partnership in the sectors of agriculture, civil protection, defense, economy, energy, environment, industry, infrastructure, investments, political relations, tourism, trade, um, transborder cooperation and transport, capitalizing also on the existing CBMs. They have, that is the parties, have agreed as follows. Settlement of the difference on the name, the pending issues relating to it, and the entrenchment of good neighborly relations. Article 1, number 1. This agreement is final and upon its entry into force terminates the interim accord between the parties signed in New York on the 13th of September 1995. Two, the parties recognize as binding the outcome of the negotiations that have taken place under the auspices of the UN, to which both parties have been committed pursuant to the UN Security Council resolutions 817 and 845, both of 1993, as well as the Interim Accord of 1995. Number three, pursuant to those negotiations, the following have been mutually accepted and agreed. A. The official name of the second party shall be the Republic of North Macedonia, which shall be the constitutional name of the second party and shall be used erga omnes as provided for in this agreement. The short name of the second party shall be North Macedonia. B. The nationality of the second party shall be Macedonian slash citizen of the Republic of Macedon North Macedonia, as it will be registered in all travel documents. C. The official language of the second party shall be Macedonian language, as recognized by the third UN conference on the standardization of geographical names held in Athens in 1977 and described in Article 7, Paragraph 3 and Paragraph 4 of this agreement. D. The terms Macedonia and Macedonian have the meaning given under Article 7 of this agreement. E. The country codes for license plates of the second party shall be NM or NMK. For all other purposes, country codes remain MK and MKD as officially assigned by the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO. F, the adjectival reference to the state, its official organs and other public entities shall be in line with the official name of the second party or its short name, that is, of the Republic of North Macedonia or of North Macedonia. Other adjectival usages, including those referring to private entities and actors that are not related to the state and public entities, are not established by law and do not enjoy financial support from the state for activities abroad, may be in line with Article 7, Paragraphs 3 and 4. The adjectival usage for activities may be in line with Article 7, Paragraph 3, and paragraph four, this is without prejudice to the process established under article one, paragraph three H and compound names of cities that exist at the date of the signature of this agreement. G, the second party shall adopt the Republic of North Macedonia as its official name and the terminology is referred to in article one, paragraph three through its internal procedure that is both binding and irrevocable, entailing the amendment of the constitution as agreed in this agreement. H, in relation to the above mentioned name and terminologies in commercial names, trademarks and brand names, the parties agree to support and encourage their business communities to institutionalize a sincere, structured, and a good faith dialogue in the context of which we'll seek and reach mutually accepted solutions on the issues deriving from the commercial names, the trademarks, the brand names, and all relevant matters at bilateral and international level. 
For the implementation of the above mentioned provisions, an international group of experts will be established consisting of representatives of the two states in the context of the European Union, EU, with the appropriate contribution of the United Nations and the ISO. This group of experts shall be established within 2019 and conclude its work within three years. Noting in Article 1, Paragraph 3, H, shall affect, I shall repeat that sentence again, nothing, nothing in Article 1, Paragraph 3, H, shall affect present commercial usage until mutual agreement is reached as provided in this subsection. Number four, upon signing this agreement, the parties shall take the following steps. A, the second party shall, without delay, submit the agreement to its parliament for ratification. Following ratification of this agreement by the parliament of the second party, the second party shall notify the first party that its parliament has ratified the agreement. C, the second party, if it decides so, will hold a referendum. D, the second party shall commence the process of constitutional amendments as provided for in this agreement. E, the second party shall conclude in toto the constitutional amendments by the end of 2018. F, upon notification by the second party of the completion of the above mentioned constitutional amendments and of all its internal legal procedures for the entry into the force of this agreement, the first party shall promptly ratify this agreement. Five, upon entry into force of this agreement, the parties shall use the name and terminologies of Article 1, Paragraph 3 in all relevant international, multilateral and regional organizations, institutions and Fora, including all meetings and correspondence, and in all their bilateral relations with all member states of the UN. Six, in particular, immediately upon entry into force of this agreement, the second party shall a notify all international, multilateral and regional organizations, institutions and fora of which it is a member of the entry into force of this agreement and request that all those organizations, institutions and fora thereafter shall adopt and use the name and terminologies referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 3 of this agreement for all usages and purposes. Both parties shall also refer to the second party in accordance with Article 1, Paragraph 3, in all communications to, with, and in those organizations, institutions, and fora. B. Notify all member states of the UN of the entry into force of this agreement and shall request them to adopt and use the name and terminologies referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 3 of this agreement for all usages and purposes, including in all their bilateral relations and communications. Seven, upon entry into force of this agreement and subject to provisions under Articles 1, Paragraph 9 and Paragraph 10, the terms Macedonia, Republic of Macedonia, FYR of Macedonia, FYR Macedonia in a translated or untranslated form, as well as the provisional name of former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia and the acronym FIROM shall cease to be used to refer to the second party in any official context. Eight. Upon entry into force of this agreement and taking into account its Article 1, Paragraph 9 and 10, the parties shall use the name and terminologies of Article 1, Paragraph 3 for all usages and all purposes erga omnes, that is domestically in all their bilateral relations and in all regional and international organizations and institutions. Nine, upon entry into force of this agreement, the second party shall promptly in accordance with sound administrative practice, take all necessary measures so as the country's competent authorities 
Henceforth, use internally the name and terminologies of Article 1, Paragraph 3 of this agreement in all new official documentation, correspondence, and relevant materials. 10. As regards the validity of already existing documents and materials issued by the authorities of the second party, the parties agree they, that um, there shall be two transitional periods, one technical and one political. A. The technical transitional period shall relate to all official documents and materials of the public administration of the second party for international usage and to those for internal usage that may be used externally. These documents and materials should be renewed in accordance with the name and terminologies as referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 3 of this agreement within five years from the entry into force of this agreement at the latest. B. The political transitional period shall relate to all documents and materials exclusively for internal usage in the second party. The issuance of the documents and materials falling under the category in accordance with Article 1, Paragraph 3, shall commence at the opening of each EU negotiation chapter in the relevant field and shall be finalized within five years thereof. 11. Procedures for the prompt amendment of the Constitution of the Second Party in order to fully implement the provisions of this agreement shall commence upon ratification of this agreement by its parliament or following a referendum if the second party decides to hold one. Just a reminder that you're listening to In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska, and we are making reference to um, Professor Dr. Igor Yanev's publication, and in particular, Appendix 1. <music> Going, continuing on to page 261 of this publication, number 12, the name and terminologies as referred to in Article 1 of this agreement shall be incorporated in the constitution of the second party. This change shall take place on blanc with one amendment. Pursuant to this amendment, the name and terminologies will change accordingly in all articles of the constitution. Furthermore, the second party shall proceed to the appropriate amendments of its preamble, Article 3 and Article 49, during the procedure of the revision of the Constitution. Sounds like a very one-sided document they are referring to as agreement, but that's what it is. That's what the party is signed on. Article 2. One, the first party agrees not to object to the application by or the membership of the second party under the name and terminologies of Article 1, Paragraph 3 of this agreement in international, bilateral and regional organizations and institutions of which the first party is a member. Well, of course they won't object because they were the ones who enforced this uh, nomenclature. How would they object? That will be totally hypocritical, would it not? Number two of Article two, the second party shall seek admission to international, multilateral and regional organizations and institutions under the name and terminologies of Article one, paragraph three of this agreement. Hmm. Three, upon entry into force of this agreement pursuant to its Article one, the first party shall ratify any of the second party's accession agreement to international organizations of which the first party is a member. Four, in particular with respect to the second party, EU and North Atlantic Treaty, that is the NATO business, integration processes, the following shall apply. A, the second party shall seek admission to NATO and the EU under the name and terminologies of Article 1 of this agreement, North Macedonia, that's what they're talking about, accession to um NATO and the EU will be under that same name and terminologies. Mm -hmm. B, upon receiving the notice of this ratification of this agreement by the Parliament of the second party, the first party shall promptly 
one, notify the President of the Council of the EU that it supports the opening of the EU accession negotiations of the second party under the name and terminologies of Article 1 of this agreement. Two, notify the Secretary General of NATO that it supports the extension of an excess on invitation by NATO to the second party. Such support of the first party is conditional, first to an outcome of referendum, more conditions, yes, and forced conditions. If the second party decides to hold one, so such support of the first party is conditional, first to an outcome of referendum, if the second party decides to hold one consistent with this agreement, and second, to the completion of the constitutional amendments provided for in this agreement. Upon receipt of notification by the second party concerning the completion of all its internal legal procedures for the entry into force of this agreement, including a possible national referendum with an outcome consistent with this agreement, and upon conclusion of the amendments, in the constitution of the second party, the first party shall ratify the second party's NATO accession protocol. This ratification procedure shall be concluded together with the ratification procedure of this agreement. Yes, all conditional upon the Hellenic Republic to do what they want to do, not necessarily in the interest of the Republic of Macedonia, clearly. Article 3, 1, the parties hereby confirm their common existing frontier as an enduring and inviolable international border. Neither party shall assert or support any claims to any part of the territory of the other party or claims for a change to their common existing frontier. In addition, neither party shall support any such claims that may be raised by any third party. Really, so it extends to third parties, yeah? So Macedonia, the Republic of Macedonia is not allowed to support a third party. Should such a third party make any claims that relate to the existing frontier? Two, each party commits to respect the sovereignty, the territorial integrity, and the political independence of the other party. Neither party shall support any actions of any third party directed against the sovereignty, the territorial integrity, or the political independence of the other party. The parties shall refrain uh, in accordance with the purposes and principles of the Charter of the UN, from the threat or use of force, including the threat or use of force intended to violate their common existing frontier. Number four, the parties commit not to undertake, instigate, support, or and or tolerate any actions or activities of a non-friendly character directed against the other party. Neither party shall allow its territory to be used against the other party by any third part, country, organization, group, or uh, individual carrying out or attempting to carry out subversive secessionist actions or actions or activities which threaten in any manner the peace, stability or security of the other party. Each party shall communicate without delay to the other party any information in its possession regarding any such actions or intentions. Article 4. 1. Each party hereby commits and solemnly declares that nothing in its constitution as it is in force or will be amended in the future, can or should be interpreted as constituting or will ever constitute the basis for any claim to any area that is not included in its existing international borders. Two, each party undertakes not to make or to authorize any irredentist statements and shall not endorse any such statements by those who purport to act on behalf of or in the interest of the party. Three, each party hereby commits and solemnly declares that nothing in its constitution, as it is in force or will be amended in the future, can or should be interpreted as constituting or will ever constitute the basis for interference with the internal affairs of the other party in any form and for any reason, including for the protection of the status and rights of any persons that are not its citizens. 
Article 5. In the conduct of the affairs, the parties shall be guided by the spirit and principles of democracy. Sounds good. Democracy. Fundamental freedoms, respect for human rights and dignity, and the rule of law in accordance with the Charter of the UN, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the European Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, to uh, the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the Helsinki Final Act, the document of the Copenhagen meeting of the Conference on the Human Dimensions of the Conference on Security and Cooperation in Europe and the Charter of Paris for a new Europe and other international agreements and instruments to which both parties are party. Two, no provision of any of the instruments referred to in paragraph one above shall be interpreted to give any right to either party to take any action contrary to the aims and principles of the Charter of the UN or of the Helsinki Final Act, including the principle of territorial integrity of states. One, United Nations official records of the General Assembly, third session, um, part uh, one, page 71, two, United Nations Treaty Series, volume 213, page 221, 31 BID, volume 660, page 195, 195, 41 BID, volume 1577, number one, uh, dash 27531. Article 6. One, aiming at strengthening friendly bilateral relations, each party shall promptly take effective measures to prohibit any hostile activities, actions or propaganda by state agencies or agencies directly or indirectly controlled by the state and to prevent activities like the to incite chauvinism, hostility, irredentism and revisionism against the other party. Should such activities occur, the party shall take all necessary measures. Two, each party shall promptly take effective measures to discourage and prevent any acts of by private entities likely to include violence, hatred, or hostility against the other party. If a private entity in the territory of a party engages in such activities without that party's knowledge, that party shall, upon such acts coming to its attention, promptly take all necessary measures as provided by law. Three, each party should prevent and DSI courage, um, uh, sorry, discourage it should be, discourage acts, including acts of propaganda by private entities likely to incite chauvinism, hostility, irredentism, and uh, revisionism against the other party. Now, on to Article 7. Um, one, the parties acknowledge that their respective understanding of the terms Macedonia and Macedonian refers to a different historical context and cultural <laughs> heritage. How can it be? <laughs> it's, it's the same country, same land, same people. Yeah, so I'll read this article um, seven, number one again. The parties acknowledge they acknowledge, they're not saying they agree, but they acknowledge that their respective understanding of the terms Macedonia and Macedonian um, refers to a different historical context and cultural heritage. Two, when reference is made to the first party, these terms denote not only the area and people of the northern region of the first party, but also their attributes, as well as the Hellenic civilization, history, culture, and heritage of that region that from antiquity to present day. Number three, when reference is made to the second party, these terms denote its territory, language, people, and their attributes with their own history, culture, and heritage, distinctly different from those referred to under Article 7.2. Really? How can they be distinctly different? Four, the second party knows that its official language, the Macedonian language, is within the group of South Slavic languages. The parties note that the official language and other attributes of the second party are not related to the ancient Hellenic civilization. They're not related, they say, to the ancient. There was no ancient Hellenic civilization history. 
a culture and heritage of the northern region of the First Party. There was always Macedonia, but no Hellenic civilization, history, culture, and heritage until the formation of the Greek state. Five, nothing in this agreement is intended to denigrate in any way or to alter or affect the usage by the citizens of either party. Article 8, 1. If either party believes one or more symbols constituting part of its historical cultural patrimony is being used by the other party, it shall bring such alleged use to the attention of the other party, and the other party shall take appropriate corrective action to effectively address the issue and ensure respect for the said patrimony. 2. Within six months following the entry into force of this agreement, the second party shall review the status of monuments. <laughs> the monuments in the Republic of Macedonia, public buildings and infrastructures on its territory and insofar as they refer in any way to ancient Hellenic history and civilization constituting an in integral component of the historic or cultural patrimony of the first party shall take appropriate corrective action to effectively address the use and ensure respect for the said patrimony. Why is it one-sided? Why doesn't it apply to the first party as well? Why does it have to be an imposition on the second party related to the status of monuments, public buildings and infrastructures on its territory? And insofar as they refer in any way to ancient Hellenic history and civilization, constituting an integral component of the historic or cultural patrimony of the first party. How can it? Because it's never been a Hellenic state. Anyway, continuing on, 266. Hmm. Three. 266 is the page number, so we're on to point three. The second party shall not use again in any way, again, imposition on the conditions on the second party. The second party shall not use again in any way and in any, in all its forms, the symbol formally displayed on its former national flag. The symbols that have been Macedonian symbols for eternity are now, according to the Hellenic state, uh, are not to be used. Within six months of the entry into force of this agreement, the second party shall proceed to the removal of the symbol displayed on its former national flag. There is no former national flag. There's only one national flag. And those symbols are Macedonian. But this is what the agreement says. And unfortunately, the Macedonian party to this agreement, uh, signatories of this agreement, agreed to it. Yeah. So, shall proceed to the removal of the symbol displayed on its former national flag from all public sites and public usages on its territory. Archaeological artifacts do not fall within the scope of this provision. <laughs> Four. Each party shall abide by the recommendations of the UN Conference on the standardization of geographical names in relation to the use of the official geographical names and toponyms in the territory of the other party, thus giving priority to the use of um, endonyms over exonyms. I doubt they understand what these words mean. Five, within one month of the signing of this agreement, the parties shall establish by exchange of diplomatic notes on a parity basis, a joint interdisciplinary committee of experts on historic, archeological and educational matters to consider the objective scientific interpretation, <laughs> objective scientific interpretation of historical events based on authentic evidence-based and scientifically sound historical sources and archaeological findings. Of course, these are all coming from the Hellenic state or the Greek Republic, as it is known when it was established not that long ago. Okay, so the committee's work shall be supervised by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the parties in cooperation with other competent national authorities. In my view, none of them are competent and they're interfering in matters that have nothing to do with them. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. Um, it shall consider, and if it deems appropriate, revise any school textbooks. Now we're talking about educational area. 
revise uh, any school textbooks and school auxiliary materials such as maps, maps, okay, maps, historical atlases, teaching guides, so remove Macedonia from everything. It has to show the Hellenic Republic only, okay, because Macedonia is Greece, apparently, to the Greeks or to the government of the Hellenic Republic. Hmm. Yeah, so every aspect of life seems to have been included in this and the conditions to change things because that's what um, the Hellenic um, state has imposed on the Republic of Macedonia and its people. In accordance with the principles and aims of UNESCO and the Council of Europe. To that effect, the committee shall set specific timetables so as to ensure in each of the parties that no school textbooks or school auxiliary material used a year after the signing of this agreement contains any irredentist revisionist references. The committee shall also study any new editions of school textbooks <laughs> and school auxiliary materials provided for under the article. The committee shall convene regularly at least twice a year and shall commit an annual report on its activities and recommendations to be approved by the High Level Cooperation Council as to be established um, pursuant to Article 2, to, uh, I beg your pardon, 12. Number six, the parties acknowledge that the above mentioned mutually accepted solutions, they are not solutions, bio. <laughs> Solutions. The parties acknowledge that the above mentioned mutually accepted solution which have derived from the negotiations will contribute to the definitive establishment of peaceful and good neighborly relations in the region. But there was always peace and good neighborly relations. There was never any threat of anything other than peace. In accordance with the United Nations Security Council resolutions 817 and 845 of 1993. Yeah. Intensification and enrichment of cooperation between the two parties. Article 9. One, the parties agreed that their strategic cooperation shall extend to all sectors, such as agriculture, civil protection, defense, economy, energy, environment, industry, infrastructure, investments, political relations, tourism, trade, transport, cooperation, and transport. This strategic cooperation shall apply not only to the sectors included in this agreement, but also to those that in the future may be deemed beneficial to both countries and indispensable. All these sectors should be incorporated into a comprehensive action plan during the course of the development of bilateral relations. Two, the existing CBMs shall be incorporated into the above mentioned action plan. The letter shall aim at the implementation of the provisions of this part of this agreement. The action plan shall be enriched and developed continuously. Mm -hmm. Diplomatic relations, Article 10, upon this entry into force of this agreement, one, the first party shall promptly upgrade a its existing liaison office in the capital of the second party to an embassy. And B, its existing office for consular, economic and commercial affairs in the town of Bitola in the second party to a general consulate. And to the second party shall promptly upgrade, um, let's see what it says, upgrade A, its existing liaison office in the capital of the first party to an embassy and B, its existing office for consular economic and commercial affairs in the town of Thessaloniki or Solon is the proper name in the first party to a general consulate. Mm -hmm. Cooperation in the context of international and regional organizations and fora. Article 11, the parties shall cooperate closely, bilaterally and within regional organizations and initiatives with a view to ensuring, ensuring yes, that Southeastern Europe becomes a region of peace. It's always been peace, growth and prosperity for its people. They shall promote and collaborate on shaping cooperation at regional level, as well as inter alia on mutual support of candidacies in the context of international multilateral and regional organizations and institutions, such as the UN and OSCE and the Council of Europe. All old structures, yes. No room for such structures any longer, I'm afraid.
political and social societal cooperation, Article 12. That was my commentary, by the way. It's not in the document, okay? This is Silvana Pavlovska, journalist, making a commentary. One, the parties agreed to reinforce and further develop its bilateral political relations through regular visits, meetings, and consultations at high political and diplomatic levels. Two, the parties through establish a high-level cooperation council of the governments, uh, jointly headed by their prime ministers. Um, this high-level cooperation council or HLCC shall, con shall convene at least annually and shall be the competent body as regards the proper and effective implementation of this agreement. Oh, yes, big brother. And the ensuring action plan. The HLCC shall take decisions and promote actions and measures for the improvement and upgrading of bilateral cooperation between the parties and shall address any issues that may arise during the implementation of this agreement and the ensuing action plan with a view to their resolution. Is there such a uh, organization called High Level Cooperation Council? Has it met ever? If it has, what's the outcome of it? Where is it? Where are the documents? Four, the parties are convinced that the development and strengthening of people-to-people -people contacts are central for building friendship, cooperation, and good neighborliness between the parties and their peoples. They shall support and encourage contacts and meetings between their citizens at all appropriate levels. Five, the parties shall support and encourage contacts between their civil societies, as well as their institutions and local authorities including youth and student cooperation activities and exchanges with a view to developing better understanding and cooperation between their peoples. Economic cooperation, Article 13. Having regard to the fact that the second party is a landlocked state, yes, thanks to Greece, taking over land which doesn't belong to it in 2013, with the courtesy from um, the great powers at the time, the Bucharest Agreement I'm referring to, mm -hmm. Silvana speaking to you now. Having regard to the fact that the second party is a landlocked state, the parties shall be guided by the relevant provisions of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea as far as applicable both in practice and when concluding agreements referred to in Article 18 of this agreement. Article 14, the parties shall further develop their economic cooperation in all areas. Particular emphasis shall be placed on the strengthening, enhancement and deepening of their bilateral cooperation on agriculture, energy, environment, industry, infrastructure, investments, tourism, trade and transport. To achieve this objective, the parties shall capitalize on and utilize the existing CBMs, constituting a mutually beneficial cooperative platform, which will evolve into an action plan. Is there an action plan? If so, how many of them are there? When were they done? Why are they not transparent? Two, the parties shall encourage mutual investments and shall take all necessary measures for the effective protection and shall take all necessary measures for the effective protection. We've read that before, including measures against excessive bureaucracy and for overcoming institutional, administrative and tax barriers. The parties shall place particular emphasis on the cooperation between companies businesses and industries of each party. Three, the parties shall refrain from imposing any impediment to the movement of people or goods between their territories or through the territory of either party to the territory of the other. The parties shall cooperate to facilitate such movements in accordance with international law. Number four, it is a very lengthy appendix A, eh? so thank you for bearing with me. A reminder again, we are reading from Appendix 1 of the um, a publication by Professor Dr. Rigoryanev, uh, an expert on international law. Um, four, the parties shall develop and boost their cooperation 
with regard to energy, notably through the construction, maintenance, and utilization of interconnecting natural gas and oil pipelines existing under construction and projected, and with regard to renewable energy resources, including photovoltaic, wind, and hydroelectric. Possible pending matters will be addressed um, promptly by reaching mutually beneficial uh, settlements, taking into serious consideration the European policy on energy and the Aquis Communautaire. The first party shall assist the second party with appropriate transfer of know-how and expertise. Now, I want to remind you, our watcher and listener, that Macedonia is not part of the European Union. Macedonia has an expressed a desire and had fulfilled all the requirements to do to, to be admitted um, into the European uh, into the United Nations as a, uh, under the name of Republic of Macedonia until this veto from from the Hellenic uh, state. And then all this came about because the Macedonian government at the time in their wisdom or lack of it, um, didn't realize and agreed that there was a dispute, but there's never been a dispute of any nature. Hmm? Yes, so this is what happens when you don't know what you're doing and you don't understand. Um, I need to also remind ourselves that this document, this agreement, the PRESPA agreement, signed between the Republic of Macedonia and the Hellenic State, was written originally in English, English language, okay, not in Macedonian language. Has it ever been translated? I'd love to see a translation of it so I can do my objective assessment and evaluation of the accuracy or lack of it therein. Five, the parties shall promote, extend and improve cooperative synergies in the areas of infrastructures and transport, as well as on a reciprocal basis, road, rail, maritime and other, and air transport and communication connections using the best available technologies and practices. They shall also facilitate the transit between them of goods, cargoes and merchandises via the infrastructures, including ports and airports in the territory of each party. Macedonia doesn't have a port. The Macedonian Sea, the Aegean Sea, is occupied by the Hellenic state since 1913, Bucharest Agreement. They shall um, also facilitate the transit between them of goods, cargoes, and merchandises via the infrastructures, including ports and airports, airports in the territory of each party. The party shall adhere to international rules and regulations with respect to transit, telecommunication signs, and codes. The first party shall do so insofar as and in a manner compliant with its obligations deriving from its membership in the EU, but Macedonia is not a member of EU, and other international instruments. So how can EU apply in the Republic of Macedonia situation as the second party in this agreement when Macedonia is not a member of the EU, uh, courtesy from the Hellenic Republic? The second party shall do so insofar as and in a manner compliant with its obligations deriving from its memberships in international, multilateral, or regional institutions or organizations in which it is a member on the entry into force of this agreement, as well as its membership of the EU. So, following its proposed accession there too. Six, the parties shall seek to improve and modernize existing border crossings as required by the flow of traffic and to construct new border crossings within a view to boosting tourism, touristic, they say, touristic. I don't know that there's such a word in English, touristic. Tourism and commercial flows sounds better to me, and commercial flows between them. Seven, the parties shall take measures to ensure the protection of the environment and the preservation of the natural habitat in the transborder waters and the surrounding space, and shall cooperate in seeking to reduce eliminate, and eliminate all forms of pollution. The parties shall strive to develop and harmonize strategies and programs for regional and international cooperation for the protection of the environment. Eight, the parties shall support the broadening 
of tourist um, uh, exchanges, tourism, should read tourism exchanges, and the, whoever wrote this one, okay, this is the original agreement written in English, yeah, that's what it says. Yeah, the party shall support the broadening of tur tourist, tourist exchanges and the development of their cooperation in the fields of alternative tourism, including cultural, religious, educational, medical, and athletic tourism, athletic tourism, and shall cooperate in improving and promoting business and tourist travel between them. Mm -hmm. Nine, the party shall establish a joint ministerial committee, yet another committee, <laughs> in order to attain the best possible cooperation in the above-mentioned sectors of economic partnership, including through the organization of joint business fora convention, convening, I beg your pardon, at least once a year, this other new committee called Joint Ministerial Committee, JMC, mm -hmm. um, will steer the course of bilateral economic cooperation, the comprehensive implementation of the relevant sectoral sections, sectoral actions, agreements, protocols, and contractual frameworks, as well as all future relevant agreements. The parties encourage the closest possible interaction between their chambers of commerce. Mm -hmm. Cooperation in the fields of education, science, culture, research, technology, health, and sport. Article 15, in the age of the new industrial revolution and second age of machines, the deepening of cooperation among states and societies is necessary now more than ever, in particular with respect to social activities, technologies, and culture sense. In furtherance thereof, both in a narrow and a broad, and a broad one, the parties shall develop, shall develop and improve their scientific, technological, and technical cooperation, as well as their collaboration in the area of education. They shall intensify the exchanges of information and of scientific and technical documentation, and shall strive to improve mutual access to scientific um, and research institutions, archives, libraries, and similar institutions. The party shall support initiatives by scientific and educational institutions, as well as by individuals aimed at improving cooperation and exchanges in the areas of sciences, technology, and education. Two, the parties shall encourage and support events as well as scientific and educational programs in which members of their scientific and academic communities shall participate. They shall also encourage and support the convening of bilateral and international conferences in their areas. Three, the parties attach great significance to the development of research into and the implementation and utilization of new technologies including digital technology and nanotechnology in a manner that is environmentally friendly and upgrades the skills, capacities, and overall well-being of their citizens. To that end, they shall develop the cooperation among their research centers, the researchers, and academic institutional systems. Four, the parties shall place special emphasis on the development of cultural relations between the two states, their societies, and their social groups, having particular regard to arts, dance, cinematography, music, and theater. In this regard, particular importance shall be given to sports. Bilateral collaboration on the domain of health, including healthcare, shall be promoted. Police and civil protection cooperation, Article 16, 1, the parties shall cooperate closely in the fight against organized and trans-border crime, Terrorism, economic crimes, having regard in particular to crime related to the illicit trafficking and or exploitation of human beings, to crimes related to the production, trafficking, and or trade of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances, to the illicit manufacturing of any trafficking in firearms, their parts and components and ammunition, to the illicit import, export, and transfer of ownership of cultural property, to offences against civil air transport, and to crime related to counterfeiting and or smuggling of cigarettes, alcohol, or fuels. Number two, the parties shall cooperate closely in the civil protection sector, placing particular emphasis 
on preventing and dealing with natural and man-made disasters and on disaster relief. Each party may utilize the special education and expertise of the other party and um, whenever needed and possible, each party shall provide to the other its special infrastructure, particularly in firefighting. The parties may examine the establishment of a relevant mechanism to assist in the implementation of this article. Defence Cooperation, Article 17. The parties shall reinforce and expand their cooperation in the area of defence, including through frequent visits and contacts between the political and military leadership of their armed forces, the appropriate transfer of know-how and capacity building, the cooperation in the areas of production, information and joint military exercises. Special emphasis shall be placed on personal training which the parties could provide to each other. Treaty relations, Article 18, one, upon entry into force of this agreement, the party shall, in their relations, be directed by the provisions of the following bilateral agreements that have been concluded between the former Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and the first party on the 18th of June, 1959. A, the Convention Concerning Mutual Legal Relations. B, the Agreement Concerning the Reciprocal Recognition and the enforcement of judicial decisions, and C, the agreement concerning hydroeconomic questions. Two, the parties agree that upon entry into force of the present agreement, all international documents binding on the parties bilateral shall remain in force, unless specifically terminated by this agreement. Three, the parties shall consult with each other in order to identify other agreements concluded between the former Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and uh, the first party that will be deemed suitable for application in their mutual relations. For the parties commit to explore all possibilities to conclude additional uh, bilateral agreements needed with regard to areas of mutual interest. Settlement of disputes, Article 19, one, the parties shall settle any disputes exclusively by peaceful means in accordance with the Charter of the UN. Two, in the event that a party considers that the other party is not acting in accordance with its provision of this uh, agreement, this party shall first notify the other party of its concerns and shall seek a solution by negotiation. If the party is unable to resolve the matter bilaterally, the parties may agree to request the Secretary General of the United Nations to use his good offices to resolve the matter. Three, any dispute that arises between the parties concerning the interpretation or implementation of this agreement and not resolved according to the procedures referred to under Article 19, Paragraph 2, may be submitted to the International Court of Justice. Hmm. The parties should first seek to agree upon a joint submission to said court regarding any such dispute. However, if the agreement is not reached within six months or such longer period as the parties uh, shall mutually agree, then any such dispute may be submitted by either party individually. Final clauses, clauses, Article 20. One, the article shall be signed by the Ministers of Foreign Affairs of the two parties, Two, this agreement is subject to ratification according to the sequencing procedure set out in Article 1, Paragraph 4. Number three, upon completion of the uh, necessary um, internal legal procedures for the entry into force of this agreement as set out in Article 1, the parties shall, within two weeks and in writing, notify each other. This agreement shall enter into force on the date of receipt of the last notification by the party concerned. Number four, Article 8, Paragraph 5, shall apply provisionally pending the entry into force of this agreement. If this agreement does not enter into force, this agreement in its entirety and each of its provisions individually shall have no further effect or application, provisional or otherwise, and shall not bind either of the parties in any way. Very important. Article 8, paragraph 5, shall apply provisionally pending the entry into force of this agreement. 
if this agreement does not enter into force, this agreement in its entirety and each of its provisions individually shall have no further effect or application, provisional or otherwise, and shall not shall not bind either of the parties in any way. Six, uh, five, the difference and the remaining issues referred to in Security Council resolutions 817 and 845 of 1993 shall be considered as having been resolved upon entry into force of this agreement. Six, as soon as possible upon entry into force of this agreement, the parties or one of the parties shall inform the Secretary General of the United Nations of the entry into force of this agreement, including the date of its entry into force for its implementation at the UN. Seven, this agreement is not directed against any other state, entity or person. It does not infringe on the rights and duties resulting from bilateral and multilateral agreements already in force that the parties have concluded with other states or international organizations. Eight, the first party shall apply this agreement in accordance with its obligations deriving from its membership in the European Union, yeah, and its membership in other international multilateral or regional institutions or organizations, as well as other international instruments. Similarly, the second party, that is the Republic of Macedonia, as well as other, um, um, shall apply this agreement in accordance with its obligations deriving from its membership in international, multilateral, or regional institutions or organizations, including the EU. Well, how can you have the... Macedonia is not a member of EU. So EU um, policies and laws do not apply to Macedonia. They're not a member because of... Hellenic state not letting it be or vetoing its application. Yeah, but it says following its proposed accession there are two. And we are almost at the end of Appendix um, 1 Yeah, of the PRESPA agreement. Mm -hmm. 9. The provisions of, the, of this agreement shall remain in force for an indefinite period of time indefinite, yeah, and are irrevocable. Hmm. Indefinite and irrevocable. No modification of this agreement contained in Article 1, Paragraph 3 and Article 1, Paragraph 4 is permitted. Clearly one-sided agreement that is not in, in the favour, it's not a it's not in favor of the other party, the second party, namely the Republic of Macedonia. How can you not permit changes or modifications or, you know, this is an indefinite period of time and it's irrevocable. Ten, this agreement shall be registered with the Secretariat of the United Nations pursuant to Article 102 of the Charter of UN as soon as it has entered into force. In witness thereof, the parties have, through their authorised representatives, signed three copies of this agreement, final agreement in the English language. There it is. It's confirming that this agreement is in the English language. Okay? Doesn't mean those who represented Macedonia in the so-called negotiations over the name <clears throat> and all sorts of other concocted stuff, that they understood the English language. Why wasn't it written in Macedonian? Hmm? And in Greek, and then they can have it translated. So I'm wondering who actually put this together. It wasn't a Macedonian person. It wasn't a Greek person, was it? Was it a Greek-speaking person? Was it the Greek government? Or was it some external entity, a third party of some sort? So, representative of the first party, representative of the second party, witness in accordance with Security Council resolutions uh, 817 and 845. Guess who is the signatory of this document? Mm -hmm. Matthew Nimitz. He's the one. So, there you have it, Appendix 1. My question to you and those who put together the agreement 
which contains many, many pages. Um, and it's biased. Is there another agreement that any other country has signed that is identical or similar to the one that Macedonia signed? Or is this a something that's new and introduced only for the Republic of Macedonia and its people? Are there any agreements in existence that the UN has ratified where other countries have had to and agreed to sign agreements that are to the detriment of their country. I'll leave you with that question in mind. Thank you for following In Focus with Silvana Pavlovska. Please don't forget to um, watch uh, all the series. And we have quite a few, um, in excess of 40, I think, um, recordings have been done. Um, they've been done professionally with the introduction, the closure and in, in music in between. Um, so... Um, it's important that you follow. Yes, there have been a few comments made uh, by me uh, in the course of reading these documents, but I've tried to each time um, let you know that it is my commentary. It's not part of the agreement. And I'm interested in your views. Uh, by all means, write to us uh, via our YouTube or Rumble channels um, if you see this information on Facebook, you're welcome again to provide some, some feedback that is constructive. And um, uh, what are your views about this so-called PRESPA agreement? Um, uh, that it is an uh, indefinite period of time and it's irrevocable. You can't change anything. It's there for eternity. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you once again, and um, I will see you soon. Bye for now. Bye.